Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday, May the 13th, 2008 session in our series on entrepreneurship in Asian high-tech industries. Uh, we've looked at Vietnam last week. We looked at Japan several weeks ago. We have looked at student entrepreneurship across Asia. We have um, looked at, you know, kind of my update of what was going on in Asia. For this week, I'm delighted that we can move on to an economy that has a very unusual position in Asia and that also um, has some unusual challenges that relate to its unusual position. We're talking about Taiwan and the kind of integration that's going on economically between Taiwan and the mainland, even as they maintain separate political systems. And, um, yeah, the other thing that I'm really delighted about this week is we have one of the people to speak for us who's been with us for years in the audience, who has given many good questions to our speakers over the years, and who could speak equally in any of our three seminar series, right, the one on entrepreneurship, the technical survey series, or <coughs> the one in the autumn that we have that's on management of technology. In fact, uh, it was kind of hard to figure out what was the right time to ask Bevan to speak because, uh, you know, any one of these series would have been a good one. Um, Dr. Bevan Wu has over 33 years of experience at IBM in uh, applied research, product development, and manufacturing engineering. Of that, about 26 years he spent in management. Uh, he was in the first group of IBM staff who started up their semiconductor op manufacturing operations in Fishkill, New York. Um, he managed products in semiconductor product development, uh, automated integrated circuit manufacturing systems, and also expert systems for manufacturing applications. He implemented the first IBM automated integrated circuit manufacturing system in 1973. Bevan um, changed jobs every few years in IBM, which is kind of normal up there, and um, retired from, took early retirement from IBM research in Yorktown in 1992 and started his own consulting firm, uh, BW and Associates. As a consultant, one of his first clients was um, TSMC, and also YC and the um, Micro Integrated Circuits Research Lab, MIRL, inside ITRI in Taiwan. Uh, MIRL. That's uh, mechanical. Mechanical. Okay. Engineer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he led a team of engineers from ITRI to uh, complete a manufacturing plant for Philips that was making a color monitor um, cathode ray tubes, and uh, he managed to get this plant off the ground from a green field to full operation in 16 months, which is really incredible um, in any day and era. Uh, he managed ITRI's Advanced Integrated Circuit Fabricator Design Project, uh, and he has his own integrated um, circuit fabricator design process that was involved, and he's also had a startup company. He was CEO of Lexel Laser Incorporated in Fremont, and he's currently in a variety of advisory roles to ITRI, uh, International USA, and also he's a, a member at large of SEMI, the Semiconductor Equipment and Manufacturing Institute International, that's what it is, uh, North American Regional Standards Committee, and he's also advisor to SEMI's International um, Standards Committee. He's got his PhD from Stanford and also uh, an MS and EE from Ohio State and uh, his BS in Electrical Engineering from National Taiwan uh, University. I'm delighted that Bevan can come and speak with us today. Let me turn the floor over to you. I, I get to play with the slides while Bevan talks with the screen. Well, thanks, Richard. Well, it's nice uh, to talk about, Richard asking you to talk about entrepreneurship in Taiwan. And uh, then I look at this, uh, what can add to whatever you already heard of it. Um, things uh, I was uh, notified last week yeah, and I don't have time to have my talk to be uh, sanctioned by Taiwan, uh, the uh, institute. So I said, uh, 
just don't have enough time. So uh, Richard said, uh, why don't you just talk about your own personal uh, opinions? I said, fine. Okay, so that's why my first slide is a claim and disclaim. Okay, so therefore, it doesn't represent any official Taiwan position, nor of the institute, nor from the seminar. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's go to the next one. So if you talk about entrepreneur, what's the definition of entrepreneur? So in my case, I would say, well, there's an old Chinese saying, if you want to have something successful, you have to be at the right time, at the right place, and you happen to be the right person. So therefore, over here, you see a person, and uh, money suddenly is the blood to keep you going. However, the geographical and the cultural area, which is the location, very important. That's at least, I find that out, very important. And timing. If you are at the right time, fine, you make it. If you are not at the right time, no matter how good an opinion or idea you have, you may not succeed. Okay, next please. Now, the culture and the entrepreneurship, it's uh, quite important because uh, many of people, especially the Americans, rush over going to Asia and uh, you think about uh, everything written down in a paper, legally sound, and get a signature, everything done, right? Wrong. And so I divided the uh, North American, of course USA is the representative example, then the Europe and Asian Pacific, because I've been assigned in uh, IBM Germany for one year, IBM Japan for one year, so I had extensive uh, contact with them. So that's how I come out with the three pictures. The United States, you see, nobody plays uh, football like the U.S. does, right? Why do the U.S. play that kind of football? You make a pass, a touchdown, how great. But can you imagine how many times you get intercepted? And if the pass not get a received, well, you take the risk, and you need a big place to play, so the football field is pretty big. So in the mentality here is you think big, and you take risk, and uh, fast in speed-wise. In Europe, boy, they would have loved to ask, uh, do you have a aristocratic uh, uh, title? You know, it would be nice if you are a baron or something, even though the the time is uh, way over, but have that still helps. And uh, everything has to be, has a structure, organization. Therefore, it's pretty stable in a social uh, kind of environment. Since the social environment is stable, therefore, people would take less risk. They don't want to play American football and make that kind of passing games. You come to the Asian Pacific. The Orientals have it a different way. You never figure out what they are thinking about. So I draw a circle. And also, also the circle is rolling pretty fast. So they can respond very fast. So that's, with this kind of difference, you want to be an entrepreneur, you better know how to fit into that kind of a place, cultural, and at the right time. All right. Uh, looks pretty good, but let's take another look. Detail. See that? In the U.S., there's all kinds. The West Coast behaves differently from, West, from East Coast. And Middle West is very stable. I try to hold the both shores together. And the, look at the Euro, Europe, right? The U.K. hates the French's guts, and the Germans don't like any of them. And yet, they have a Brussels set on top of it. <laughs> and then you look at Asia Pacific. Boy, it's all over the map. Okay? Each one have their own ideas. So, by knowing all this, 
then you would appreciate how the entrepreneurs come up about in those areas and how they behave. What is their behavior? Next one, please. And in my case, I would put them says, all right, suppose I put creating new market, take a risk, and the risk averse, and how am I going to put those people on this map? And you can put other countries on this map, but this is my personal uh, opinion. So therefore, the EU is very stable. They're creative, but they just can't catch up with Silicon Valley. And in Japan, boy, they occupy many uh, of their market. But it's a little bit slow, right? And the Taiwan is very fast, but you don't see very huge Taiwan stuff come out. And the uh, top ten uh, rich guys, I, I don't see any Taiwanese there. India's there, 